Dear Mr. Keene, this open letter to you and your organization, the American Conservative Union, is a response to a letter shared with me by a valued friend, Korean War vet, and former CIA employee, as well as a true American patriot. Your letter to him was an attempt to solicit funds and a signature on a petition in support of Arizona Governor Jan Brewer and her efforts to secure our southern border with Mexico. I'm also responding via U.S. mail notifying you of this YouTube posting so you have a chance to respond. I do this because I'm going to present you with some very difficult and challenging questions and allegations regarding you and your organization, the conservative movement overall, and the current domestic as well as global geopolitical arena. If you can offer any plausible rebuttal to this letter, I will immediately remove this from the internet, issue a formal public apology, and pledge my own support for you and your organization. As one who has conducted over 12,000 hours of research, I doubt you will respond with anything but a CIA hit team since I intend to expose you, your organization, and the entire U.S. government as treasonous and predatory in nature. First, you should be aware that I support securing the border and restoring the Constitution and the Republic. And I say restore because they have both already been destroyed, as I will demonstrate further along in the body of this letter. Anyone with the awareness level of a doorknob must know things are severely fucked up. Education, the economy, the national debt, unemployment, the list goes on and on and on. In my case, the ominous feelings began during my high school years, as I had a history teacher and mentor who I greatly respect and admire for cutting through the bullshit peddled by the public education system and giving us at least a fair chance to understand the world in which we live. Incidentally, the public education system is a near mirror image of the MO still utilized by the mainstream media and organizations such as your own which is to incite fear within the populace for personal, political, financial gain and pushing the globalization agenda. On the morning of 9-11, as I sat with several friends watching the news in, quote, shock and awe at the intensity of the, quote, terror attacks, as a journeyman ironworker since June of 88, I knew instantly, as soon as the South Tower collapsed and exclaimed to my friends that an airplane hadn't caused that. I thought to myself, how did the terrorists get bombs in those buildings? How naive I was. Thus, an attempt to satisfy my own personal curiosity ensued, and as I researched, it has since transformed into an effort to stop bombs from falling on innocent men, women, and children, here and abroad, based on the 9-11 false flag and the WMD lies. In case you really are that stupid, that brainwashed, or just haven't kept up, Afghanistan had nothing to do with 9-11 and not one weapon of mass destruction has been found or removed from Iraq. And yet our soldiers continue to die as well as countless innocent men, women and children in those two countries. And again, in case you missed history or really are that stupid, 9-11 was George W. Bush's Reichstag fire. Hitler's Enabling Act is identical to the Patriot Act. So to claim to be aligned with conservatives, you've already implicated yourself as an accessory to 9-11 in any crime or war crime that rose out of the 9-11 attacks. I submit that anyone who knows anything about the geopolitical arena, such as an American conservative union, is also aware of those facts regarding 9-11. So you must either admit sheer stupidity, utter ignorance, or treason. Which is it, Mr. Keene? But let's address the content of your letter. On page 1, paragraph 2 and 3, you point out that Obama is not protecting the people of Arizona, which isn't surprising since he's bent on destroying what little chance we have left of restoring our republic, and is also ignoring his responsibility to the Constitution. Here I couldn't agree with you more. However, Obama is only accelerating the Bush Doctrine, as witnessed by the NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, and the North American Union, pushed by W's administration. You then point out how Obama has handed over Jan Brewer and her supporters to the UN as potential human rights violators. 
Then you point out the member nations of the United Nations Human Rights Council, and we'll focus on one for the purpose of this letter, as Saudi Arabia. Now, if Saudi Arabia were such infamous human rights abusers, what in the hell is George Herbert Walker Bush doing in business with them in the Carlisle Group? On page four, excuse me, page two, paragraph four, you point out that policemen who join the force to keep their neighbors safe from burglars and traffic offenders are being gunned down by illegal aliens at such an alarming rate that the county sheriff, Paul Babo, excuse me if it's pronounced wrong, says the violence is reaching epidemic proportions. Yeah, those policemen are really protecting us from those dangerous traffic offenders. Burglars, I can understand that argument. And no one is saying that there is no danger along the border, myself included. But I keep up with the news, and I haven't heard anything about all these officers being gunned down. Can you point me to one news report? As far as loyalty to the UN, let's just revisit a speech given by George Herbert Walker Bush, coincidentally 11 years exactly to the day before the 9-11 terrorist attacks. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. That promise and vision of the UN's founders since its inception has been one world government or one world dictatorship. So it looks like your glorious conservatives are bowing down to their UN masters as well. But that's only because Barack Obama is just the New World Order's newest darling. Then you point out how Obama welcomed the president of Mexico despite the fact that thousands of aliens laugh in the face of our immigration laws. Well, this didn't start when Barack Obama took office. This has been going on through both Bush administrations, through the Clinton administration, through the Reagan administration, and so on. Did any of those previous administrations do anything to secure the border? No. What they did was attempt to open the border through the North American Union and the NAFTA agreements. When we get to paragraph 12, of page two, you say, unlike President Bush, who refused to have dealings with the despicable UN Human Rights Council and refused to allow one dime of American money to go to them. A more accurate statement would be the Bush administration's actions got us thrown out of the United Nations Human Rights Council. And then Barack Obama was first in line when it came to sign up America with that band of thugs. Maybe you really are that stupid. Either that, or you just don't have the faintest, foggiest notion that that band of thugs that you're referring to is the Bush Nazi cronies that escaped Germany in Operation Paperclip after World War II. The UN founders and the Council on Foreign Relations founders, who are the most serious threat to the United States' sovereignty, economy, and security, are the Nazis. They didn't lose World War II, they just moved. That's right, George W. Bush is the son of a Nazi and the grandson of a Nazi. So is Karl Rove, his conservative mouthpiece. H. Prescott Bush's Union Banking Corporation had all of its assets seized since H. Prescott Bush was doing Fritz Thiessen's bidding on the stock market. And they also have ties to I.G. Farben and Brown Brothers Harriman. And you want to talk about drug dealing thugs how about Herbert Walker Bush's Iran-Contra scandal? How about the Golden Triangle in Southeast Asia? All CIA operations. Again, research the Bush family and all the CIA operations. The Iran-Contra scandal. The cocaine going through L.A. through the CIA. The heroin coming out of Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War through the Johnson administration. And how about the current heroin capital of the world, Afghanistan, which now, since U.S. British troops have taken occupation of that country, produces 75% of the world's high-grade heroin. Gee, I wonder where that's ending up. American Baines? You bet it is, because that's how they finance their next operation. The only reason any of these government officials or entities want to go after the cartels is because they present competition. And that's just 
quite simply, bad for business and bad for their profits. And then let's talk about the Bush family and their drug money laundering through BCCI, Banamex, and even the large corporations such as General Motors laundering drug money. Just research the BCCI, CIA, and Banamex connections. The Bushes are the most notorious and sophisticated drug runners on the planet. As far as Obama taking the side of the criminals, Obama hasn't taken the side of the criminals. He's part of this criminal syndicate, you moron. So when you say you need assistance to stop this madness, allow me to assist. And giving your pathetically feeble mind a much needed boost. There is no left or right. There is no liberal or conservative. There is no Republican or Democrat. Any informed American is aware that this is only a paradigm designed to dupe the populace. And you say how Obama is wants to steamroll through our wealth, our sovereignty, and our personal freedom. Hey, have you been paying attention? He claims the right to jail you indefinitely. He claims the right to assassinate you without a trial, without charges, without a lawyer, without a judge, due process, or any of the above. Nothing. Just a bullet. Wake up, stupid. And again, this is only an acceleration of the Bush doctrine. Which, in truth, is nothing more than orders coming from the international bankers. But let's continue your little history lesson here, Mr. Keene. The United States was formed as a corporation in 1871. Research it. And then it was declared bankrupt through Roosevelt's executive orders of the 1930s. I suggest you research that also, because you have no constitutional rights as, as it stands. The country is destroyed. The republic is destroyed. The constitution is destroyed. You are a slave to the International Monetary Fund. All national parks, all national forests, even your glorious conservative union, all other nonprofit organizations have already been pledged to the International Monetary Fund. Holder and Geithner must expatriate to even hold the positions of Treasury Secretary and Attorney General. I suggest you research that as well. They are nothing more than collection agents for the huge national debt that has been perpetrated ever since Wilson signed the Federal Reserve Act into law in 1913. Even your children's lives have been pledged into slavery. That's why he and his other New World Order puppet, IMF agent and Interpol agent Eric Holder, are pushing the United Nations small arms treaty so heavily. There's 300 million privately owned firearms in this country, and they are our only chance to defeat this menace to the United States Republic. But let's get to page four. You state how important it is to have no less than one million petitioners if Governor Brewer is going to stand up to Barack Obama and the UN. And then you ask for as much as twenty-five to a thousand dollars or more to assist you in gaining these signatures. Have you ever heard of the internet dipshit? You can reach millions of people at the click of a mouse. I'm but one voice and I have 400 subscribers and 18,000 views on my YouTube videos in my efforts and you're telling me that your organization needs thousands of dollars from each uh, signature to the petition in order for this to happen? Huh, I seriously doubt that. There's no website on your letter. Where's your website? If you could just pass out something where people could pass out a link, you would have millions of signatures in days because you are correct when you say most of America supports Governor Brewer. And then your petition, you don't even say what you're going to do with it. It's just a support petition? How about a legal petition? How about we put these people in front of a court? Well, I guess we can't since all federal judges and judges at every level are also involved in this treason as proven by that gold fringe flag. They don't represent you. They don't represent me. They don't give a fuck about you or me any more than they do the 343 firefighters that died in those towers on 9-11. I submit you're nothing more than a parasite preying on the vulnerability of the confused and misled American people as their beloved republic burns. I challenge you to an open debate in any public forum. Any of the allegations or historical facts that I have presented in this letter. And if you can present any plausible 
explanation for your utter stupidity and ignorance, then again, I will post a public apology, remove this video from the internet, and pledge my support for your organization. So you ask my friend in this letter that you present to him whose side he is on. Well, I ask you, Mr. Keene, whose side are you on? And finally, I submit you are complicit and a willing participant in this treason and you have the blood of every US soldier dying in the false flag incited wars on your hands see on the gallows traitor